morning, good morning, good day, everyone. My name is Anna Cornelia Bayer. <clears throat> I'm a scientist. I have a PhD from the University of Hull. I worked for 12 years at the University of Hull in the area of politics. I left in 2019. I'm a member of Mensa and Intertel, but I'm also a patient with schizophrenia diagnosed in 2002. And today I will talk about schizophrenia, warm poverty and God. And I will explain schizophrenia from the inside perspective of a patient with schizophrenia. So it might not be a biological science or medical science talk, it will rather be a person, first person account from what it's like to have schizophrenia. But first, I want to say some, something for the introduction. Schizophrenia is a severe mental illness. It involves delusions, hallucinations, and voice hearing. Delusions can be, for example, false beliefs that someone believes they're being pursued by the CIA. Hallucinations can be that someone sees demons talking to them. And hearing voices is that the patient hears voices that talk to them that no one else can hear. It often leads to unemployment and the curse starts often under intense stress or trauma. Unemployment, obviously, if you hallucinate, you're not employable. One conflict are stressors that can cause schizophrenia, but it can also come from personal relationship, abusive relationships, or even lifestyle factors. Pregnancy can cause uh, psychosis is the short form of schizophrenia, psychosis is short, schizophrenia is chronic. That's the only difference. Meditation, overwork, lack of sleep, things like this. We have 51 million people with schizophrenia worldwide. And the same occurrence, roughly the same occurrence rate in all countries, above 1% in all countries. We don't know why it's the same in all countries. Um, it was less, apparently, about 300 years ago. It was one in 1,000. Now it's one in 100. The mainstream treatment is neuroleptics. That's tranquilizers that work on the brain chemistry. And the life expectancy is 10 to 20 years less than the average population, which is mostly due to suicide and unhealthy lifestyle choices. It's, one, it's classified as a top 10 disability and unemployment is common. In fact, if you look at, of course, if you hallucinate, you're not employable. So many people with schizophrenia are chronically unemployed. And in America, even if you see people on the street, very often they suffer from schizophrenia. Causal explanations. Dopamine overproduction, dysfunction is the mainstream explanation. The dopamine neurotransmitter circles are not functioning. The do dopamine is, there's too much dopamine in the brain. I'm not a neuroscientist. You see that all clearly. The other explanation that Professor John Reed promoted, it's caused by trauma, such as abuse in childhood, for example. And the third explanation that I came across, it is spiritual factors. Pr Professor Stanislav Grof, an uh, Eastern European, claims it's a spiritual emergency. And now I want to combine all three. I think all three are correct, but we need to combine them. I think trauma occurs, spirit interferes, and is represented in the brain by dopamine overproduction. And I want to explain this at my own history. I had a fairly normal childhood, apart from that I turned a refugee from East Germany to West Germany in 1988. But apart from that, it was a very happy childhood. My first psychosis was at the age of 26. That's normal age for women. Um, and the trauma was 9-11, very traumatic. I lived in Berlin at the time. I worked at the University of Berlin and 9-11 shocked me to the core. And I lost my job, that was also traumatic. And I, I was not having enough money to eat and death of a close friend in a car crash. Very traumatic period of time for me. And spiritual elements were definitely present. So to explain that, I've, it started with a channeling experience. That's 
a ter term from New Age parlance that the voice from above spoke to me and instructed me and it said things like, first there was an attack on America, then the Middle East will be affected, then Russia, and then something, the church will be built in India or something like that. That's all I remember. I don't know. I typed it down at the moment, at the back then, but my father threw the computer away. And then um, I had an out of body experience. You see that illustrated here. And then I was guided through Berlin like a robot by a higher force, by, by some unknown force. I was guided through Berlin. That was my first psychosis. Then I was put on medication. And then, and to, well, then went quiet for some years and I was functioning normally, went to America, studied there, came back. And then in 2008, it started to become chronic schizophrenia. The trauma was negative experiences with the relationship. I had a very argumentative relationship. It was both our faults, no one's fault, but it was just not a good connection. It was very argumentative and being abandoned in a foreign country. Um, as soon as I came for this man to the UK and then the relationship ended as soon as I arrived here, and that was very traumatic for me. And spiritual elements were present and it was turning benign after some time. I lived with relatively little symptoms and a very few little treatment for many years. So what happened in this schizophrenia was that I heard the male voice shouting at me all the time. That was the chronic chronicity of it. I had a two or three karmic dimensions once, I hallucinated two or three karmic dimensions meeting a fish goddess, you see that illustrated here. And I had the impression of talking to angels once. So this is a combination of my symptoms. And then I had a very happy psychosis in 2017. There was no trauma, I was falling in love, meeting my partner, and there was lots of spiritual elements. So I saw a smiley in the sky, <clears throat> that really happened. It was amazing. I don't know. There was a miracle. It looked like this. This is drawn by an artist for me, but I wanted to take a photo with my photo with my camera, but I was too slow. But it looked precisely like this and was in the sky. It was just very funny. I saw many rainbows and I, did, I developed small spots on my palm of, palms of my hands. And I learned that these are called stigmata, but I don't know the significance of this. I asked theologians and they said, they, I don't know, they didn't say anything to it. And I had a vision of a peace angel standing in the window of a house from of me and my partner. The peace angel, this is the peace angel, lady in a golden dress, golden lady, beautiful golden lady in a golden dress. And then in 2019, an intense psychosis started. The drama was Trauma was Brexit, which was very chaotic here in Britain, conflict in Britain, job loss, alcohol abuse, arguments with my family, long-standing disputes with my mother. She wanted me to start a family. I don't want this with schizophrenia, and I generally don't want it. And there was it was very, very negative, very difficult, but some profound spiritual arguments were present. So I imagined that we lived to World War. There was military activity here, but I imagined we lived to World War. I imagined zombies break into our house. I feared that one night zombies break into a house and I hid under the bed in, in fear. And I imagined that the UFO hovered over our house one night. I had visions of aliens. I had them drawn by an artist for me. According to my descriptions, this is what they looked like. And they talked to me, I had visions of them. And then it ended with a spiritual intervention. There was another voice from above and it asked me, what do you want to say? And I said, don't kill and be nice to each other. And then I said, I want to say, don't kill and be nice to each other. And then I said, I don't want to be a messenger or whatnot. And then I had the conversation, a funny, cheerful conversation with this voice, and then it all ended. 
and to give you these are the spiritual these are the experiences that someone with schizophrenia has can have and to give you an example of my voices that I hear, voice hearing is the main symptom. Hearing voices that no one hears. I sometimes ask my partner why he's not disturbed by the noise in the house, but he, he doesn't hear it. It's only me who hears it. So, for example, I hear a male voice shouting, you don't understand that, you don't understand that, they're fascists, you're getting ever nicer. You don't understand that, it hurts me, you just thought that you need to save some coffee. Don't go back to Munich. The male voice has a theme that you don't understand that and they're fascists. It always repeats that. I don't know why. And then another example, everyone does that. Go away. I don't like you. You do it right, but I don't like you. Go and cook. You do it right, but it does not work like that. I'm afraid of that. It's my fault. I did not want to see you anymore. Don't do that every day. That was fascism. Think about it. You're a terrorist. I won't forgive you. Don't do that anymore. You put my leg. Talk to your father. You don't understand that. You don't understand that. I wanted to forgive you. So these voices are very difficult to live with. But I also have nice voices. They can be male or female and angry or nice. And nice voices might say things like, you make history, this is sensational, I'm proud of you, thank you. Love heals everything. And because of these nice voices, I don't want to get rid of my schizophrenia because these nice voices are just amazing. I love them. When they're talking to me, I'm really happy. They're like my best friends. It's amazing. It's totally brilliant. So these voices, what are these voices? For my opinion, and I thought about this for a long time, these voices can only be one of three things or all three things or a combination, telepathy, spirit communication, or my own thoughts turning loud. I think these are the only possibilities. Telepathy, for a long time I thought I perceive the thoughts of others as a telepath. Um, I don't think so anymore because whenever I ask my boyfriend if he just thought this or that, or whenever I ask my mom if she's just thought this or that, when I think I hear them, they always say no, they didn't. So I don't think it's telepathy. There are some people with schizophrenia who believe they're being targeted by the state. The state did there are patents of devices which can influence brains of people from afar with voice. It's called voice to skull or something, but I don't think that's going on. I don't think that's going on. I think that's science fiction. Uh, but some people with schizophrenia have researched that. I think it's spirit communication. I think I hear spirit like a medium or psychic person, you know, and these spirits talk to me and they can be angry or nice. They can be nice spirits or angry spirits. And I think I hear spirit. That's what I think. I don't think it's my own thoughts turning loud because if it was, I could change it with meditation or think, thinking something else. And very often these voices, I cannot influence them. They are independent of me. So I believe the most likely explanation is that it's spirit communication. What helps me? Medication, I take medication, uh, but medication doesn't cure it and it's a relatively blunt tool. Alone, it's not enough. I did vitamin therapy that's developed by Abram Hofer and it includes niacin, omega-3 and vitamin C. And I think it makes me function better. I took it for 10 years and the only proof I have that it works is that I worked for 12 years at the University of Hull where I was mainly only on vitamins. And I think I think clearer and feel better when I take vitamins. And vitamin C is good against cancer. Healthy vegetarian or vegan food, that increases lifespan. A healthy vegetarian diet can increase the lifespan about 10 years. And because of my reduced life expectancy, I pursue, and for ethical and spiritual reasons, I pursue a healthy vegetarian diet. Little coffee and alcohol, no drugs. Um, I'm a lover of coffee, but coffee and excess can make me paranoid. I get very nervous and very paranoid. And lots of coffee can increase voice hearing. And alcohol just makes it terrible. It's just no good. And no drugs, of course. Music is a wonderful, cheap tool to deal with the voices. When I listen to music, I listen to music 
all day long. I love classic radio, jazz, meditation music. The voices go away. They just don't, I just don't hear them. So I listen to music, YouTube, radio, all day long. Whenever I listen, it's just a wonderful, easy, cheap, simple tool to drown out the voices. Just putting some nice, relaxing, happy music on and the voices are gone. Spirituality is very important to me. The voices have a spiritual nature. It started with a spiritual experience. And I want to say, I will say some more words about this. So I live very spiritually conscious. I pray, I turn church, um, I donate money. I try to be loving. And then finally, peace, fun, community, work, and love are also very important. This is my lifestyle treatment program the combination of these things. And here I have a result of an experiment about spirituality. I tried if prayer or lifestyle helps with changing the nature of the voices. So for example, here you see the results. If I drink and shout, when I drink, I become very argumentative and shout at people. Then I have terrible visions and terrible voices. They shout at me that I'm a witch and that I don't understand that and that it hurts them and that they will never forgive me. They say things like, you don't understand that because it hurts us. So this is not, not, not a good approach. When I pray and become a good person, they become nicer. When I write something of value, they might say, this is sensational, you make history. And then I prayed for one week nonstop, a forgiveness prayer and love prayer, a prayer for forgiveness and love. And after one week nonstop praying, I did not have time at the moment because I'm at the moment not employed. I heard the chorus of voices tell me, we love you, and I felt protected by the light. And that's another indication that is spirit communication, because otherwise I couldn't influence these voices with prayer activity. So after one week of prayer, I heard the chorus of voices from the sky saying, we love you, and I felt protected by the light. So that was good. So prayer does help. Music, vitamins, medication, healthy lifestyle, prayer, combination of these. So this is an illustration. I founded the Schizophrenia Clinic. I've written a book, Health and Safety for Spirits, as Telepaths and Visionaries, Self-Help for Schizophrenia. This is um, all alternative lifestyle interventions combined. A more academic book, I wrote this as an academic. And then I wrote my prescription for schizophrenia, which includes my personal experience and my personal lifestyle. And it's a sequel to the other book. And that's as currently a second version is coming out hopefully soon. And if you write to me under these email addresses, I'm happy to provide you with these books for free. If you're interested, I want to share my knowledge and I would generally be happy to engage in a discussion. Thank you for your attention.